Hey guys, Brian from Snowwalker Bushcraft. We're up in Lake Luzerne, New York. We're at the Adirondack Folk School and we're going to be making a toboggan, traditional toboggan sled using ash wood, steam bending, and some woodworking skills. So stick with me. The mission of the school is basically to promote traditional crafts, teach people how to do things, skills that have been lost, um, open it up in an affordable manner to, um, to people that might not have the opportunity elsewhere to learn. Jim and his wife Grace spent uh, years traveling around the country visiting folk schools from the east coast to the west coast, from north to south, and getting ideas and getting input. And, uh, one of the things they're going to be doing this year is they're starting a partnership with Great Camp Sagamore up on Racket Lake, the old Vanderbilt estate. Uh, they've had a boat building program up there and several other courses that in some ways are similar to things that go on here at the boat school that have been going on for some time. And um, I'm actually going to do a toboggan class in the fall up there. So they'll cooperate on promoting the classes and, and so forth. Um, if you're using power tools, please, number one, make sure you're wearing safety glasses. There's a couple of pairs of safety glasses in there. There probably won't be more than a couple of, a couple of machines running at any given time. So if you're wearing glasses and your glasses have safety lenses in them, that is fine for what we're doing. But if you do not wear glasses or you don't have safety lenses in them, these, the safety glasses will fit over the, uh, the top of them. Yeah. Can, Can you what? Um, you know, those glasses are pretty small. They only cover the lower half there. So I would suggest wearing the safety glasses over them if you're working at the drill press with the sanding machine. Um, piece of sawdust in the eye is not a lot of fun. Um, hand tools. We're going to be using a lot of hand tools, um, some of which will be very sharp or should be very sharp. If they're not very sharp, I will sharpen them. Um, surprisingly to most people, dull tools are more dangerous than sharp tools. Um, sharp tools, if used carefully and you pay attention to them, people rarely get hurt with them. Dull tools, people, will try, people try to force them to get them to do what they're supposed to do and they're not working well, and that's when they tend to get hurt. Um, if, you, if at some point later in the day you're feeling tired or fatigued, it may be time to step back for a minute or two and take a break or say it's enough, enough is enough for the day because most accidents happen when people get tired or they get frustrated and they start, or, or they're starting, starting to feel rushed. We'll have enough time between today and tomorrow to get these toboggans to a point that you can take them home and do the final finishing, which probably isn't going to be more than a little bit of sandpaper work and putting some varnish or whatever finish you choose to. Ash is a great wood for this. It's very strong. It's a hard wood, um, and it bends easily when we heat it up in a steam box. And we'll talk about steaming as we get to that. But it often has very interesting coloration to it. And you can see, if you look at this piece here, you can see it goes from this, this creamy, almost white color to this very reddish color. Now, if the boards are, if the slats are all milled out of the same board, you can do some interesting things because you can take that and you can put it together this way and they warp a little bit but they'll, they'll, they'll pull together as we, as we get it. But we can do it with <coughs> book matching. You get all these interesting mirror image grain patterns with it. So with six boards like this we could say well these two will make a nice pair out there and then we could say just for argument's sake take these here, and these appear to have gotten slightly out of order because I'm noticing that this grain is running out here, this white patch, but before it does on this one, so maybe this one goes with that one. That looks closer. Okay. So we can say, well, let's use, let's use maybe that pair, and say this pair, and then let's say maybe we'll put this pair in the middle or something. You know, you can, you can play with the grain patterns on them. I'm not, Sure that some of these aren't mixed up a little bit yet, um, and then well, we'll, so we'll put, you know, and then we'll just take two, two other odd, maybe maybe nice clear white ones that don't have any coloration. Put one one here and one here, and make up some kind of a pattern. Mm -hmm. So those are options you have. And if you look at fine furniture, you very often will see what they call book matched grain, 
where you'll see these mirror image patterns in the grain and the color of the, the wood that's being used. And this is a good, a good exercise to, to do that. Um, don't worry about any kind of warping on these pieces uh, because when we put the cross members on, they're flexible enough that we'll have no problem pulling them together and making them straight. Long pieces of wood typically will warp somewhat um, as they dry and as we cut them into strips and so forth, so it's, it's really not uh, an issue. What is more of an issue is to decide which end we're going to bend. Uh, there is a risk when you're bending wood of having them crack or split, and you want to decide which end has the most uniform grain patterns in the area where the bend is going to take place. If one end has some really weird anomalies, now these strips, to start with, I see they've got some minor defects in the end, so right off the bat I would want to use this end as the back end because we can trim them off and that'll, that'll determine the total final length of the toboggan. And there is some extra wood on these. Um, although there's some odd grain that runs in strange directions here at the tip, it's at the very tip. The area that's going to bend is largely back in here. And the grain's pretty good in here, so the likelihood is these are all going to bend just fine at this end. So when you lay out your strips that you're going to use, we're going to want to decide which end is going to be the bent end, and which is going to be for the front, and which end is going to be the non-bent end for the back. And if you're not sure, we'll talk about that um, as you're laying them out. All right, so what we're doing now is we're taking our slats and we're actually going to start to book match these and Mark is having us check the ends, looking for imperfections, uh, where we're going to bend, uh, which is going to be the tail of the, uh, the, the, uh, the toboggan itself. So we have our slats and in the end what we're going to have is we're going to have a 14 inch wide toboggan by about 6 feet long. So, we'll take a look at this. We have our slats laid out here, and that'll be the back of the toboggan. We're gonna make this toboggan a little bit more narrow than what some of the other guys are doing, primarily because we're gonna use this for trekking, and we're not gonna necessarily use this for going down hills. All right, so what we want is we want it to be narrow so that it fits in the trough of our snowshoes, okay? Basically, what you would do is you would measure uh, in length how much gear you're going to be taking. So if you're going to be taking a lot of gear into the woods, you'd actually be wanting to make a longer toboggan, something around a 9, 10, or 11 foot toboggan. We're making a 6 footer because that's what we, the materials are allowing us to do. But it's still going to be enough to carry uh, some gear for the, uh, for the winter time. Steam box that we're going to be using to uh, actually bend our runners. You can see it's not very, very big at all. Okay. There you go. There's the system. There's your water. Run the window box. Thermometer.
Um, wood is comprised of fibers, the cellulose fibers, that are bound together in a natural resin called lignin. And when the resin, when the lignin is at normal room temperature, it's fairly stiff. It doesn't have much give to it, so it holds the fibers of the wood very rigidly together and it gives the wood stiffness. If we can heat up that lignin and soften it, then the wood fibers can, can slide a little bit against each other and the wood becomes more flexible. In theory, you can heat the wood in any way you want it. You can take a heat gun or stick the end of it in an oven or something. Um, but other, there's other things that happen in the process and keeping and getting it hot and wet at the same time is really the key to making the wood bendable. So steam is, is, is the ideal method to, to do it. It's been used for eons for bending wood. I mean, you go back to the time of the Vikings and they were bending wood using steam and I think the Native Americans used, uh, used steam when they built birch bark canoes to bend the ribs that are inside the canoe. Um, so you have to have some way of generating the steam and containing it. Carol, did you something? I just, about half an hour, somebody can go. Okay. Okay. Do you know where the mini market rock goes? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, when I did, when I did my first steam box, actually it was the same box, my steam generator was nothing but an old electric tea kettle that I purchased at a garage sale for a dollar. And I siliconed in a piece of garden hose into the spout, and I stuck the other end of the garden hose into the box and generated steam. And it wasn't bad. The only, the biggest problem was it didn't hold that much volume of water, and you had to be really careful if you didn't run the thing dry in the middle of your, your process. But it worked for me for years. Um, there's a lot of guys that uh, have, have rigs that they've made taking propane burners and an old steel style gasoline can without the gasoline. You put water in the can, you put the can on the burner, you put a hose off the off the old spout and it makes it, it makes a steam bender. Obviously not very good to use indoors with a big propane burner on it. And there's all kinds of other devices that have been used. Recently somebody got a brilliant idea. These things are made by a company called Earlex and they make wallpaper steamers. And they sell this thing with to use for wallpaper steamer, and it is this container with the heating element in it, and this piece of flexible hose, and it's got a few attachments that you use to go up and down the wall and steam your wallpaper. So at some point, somebody got this brilliant idea, and they started marketing these things in the woodworking stores for $69, and it's the greatest thing since sliced bread for the purpose, because it's small, it's light, it's convenient, it holds a lot of water, and it's safe to use indoors. So I, I purchased one of these, uh, I don't know, five or six years ago when they first came out. And then when I started teaching classes up here, we bought them at the folks school bought one. And that's what we use. The general rule of thumb is that in order to bend wood, you need to, you need to steam it at some, it, it close to 212 degrees. That's about as hot as you're going to get the box. That's as hot as the steam is going to be unless you pressurize it. Um, about one hour per inch of thickness of the wood. Our wood is, for these, for these runners, is about a quarter of an inch thick, so in theory 15 minutes is enough. Within reason, you can't oversteam. You can, in theory, if you way oversteam it, it cook the lignin, and then its characteristics change again and it doesn't like to bend again. Um, but a little bit of oversteaming is not going to hurt anything. So we've we've generally been uh, heating the wood for about 20 minutes. It gives us a little bit of a margin for error. When we're done steaming, we're going to take it out of the out of the steam box, and we're going to bend the wood around these forms. And I'll show you how we're going to do that. Now, the thing is, we need to do it smoothly and fairly quickly when we take it out because the wood is going to cool pretty quickly and, the, and as it cools it loses its bendability and since this is fairly thin stock we're dealing with it cools pretty quickly so we're going to in one smooth motion we're going to take them out of the steam box slip them in the form and bend them over and, and clamp them down temporarily and then take the next one out put it in and bend it over we'll do them one at, one at a time as we do it we want to do it quickly but we want to do a nice smooth motion as we as we come around with it. And I'll help you with the first few and then we'll kind of work as teams of two or three while we're doing it. Um, 
So anyway, I just kind of wanted to go over that with you briefly. Um, Brian's finishing up his last slat. As soon as he finishes that one, we're going to put it in the steam box, let it sit, let it, you know, percolate in there for 20 minutes, and uh, then I'll call everybody back together when we're actually ready to start. Okay, and you'll see how we do the first batch, and then we're going to do it four more times over the next day.